Hello and welcome to our podcast on the things they carried. This is going to be one of a few different podcasts that will be used to set up this book, but this one talks a little bit about the background knowledge that we are going to need and kind of the purpose of why we are reading this novel. So as we continue through the year, we always want to do some predicting and thinking ahead of time of why we are reading the novel and then to remind ourselves of what we should be doing while reading. And so oftentimes as we get into things, we consider the pre-reading strategies that we might want to employ. Things like initiating background knowledge, making some predictions, asking ourselves what we know about a topic, what we want to know, and then figuring out a plan for how we might learn that. Additionally, we should also be thinking about what we're going to do while reading. And so that's the purpose of this podcast, to remind us of some things that we've talked about in the past and how we might implement some of those and some new things into our read of the things they carry. On this slide, you see some of the things that we have done before in our class in terms of lessons we have done, practices we have made, and then larger novels that we have applied things to. And so since we've done that already, that is fair game for us to continue to do. As always, as we are reading literature, we want to make sure that we are looking for theme, that author's message about life and humanity, some sort of greater reason for writing this novel beyond just entertainment. So, of course, we're going to be looking through theme. And then we have to think about, well, how might Tim O'Brien reveal his message to the world? And so we look at some of the other literary terms and devices that we have talked about so far. Things like the character realm. We have looked at how static and dynamic and foil pairs can help reveal theme. So we should probably look at doing that in this novel. We also have looked at narrator reliability. Is there anything about our narrator that may cause us to question what he or she is saying? We also have tracked motifs, so we should probably plan on doing that again. And then the last one there, breaks in time. We have looked at how authors set up flash forwards and flashbacks, so we should plan on looking for those as we read. Now, what are we going to see that's new for this book that we have not studied before? And one is Tim O'Brien's style. It is quite different from other authors that we've read so far. I liken it to the word sparse. It seems like he's using less words than others. It seems at times that his style gives us a nice, long, lengthy narrative section or paragraph, and then is followed up with a short, choppy sentence. And so that's somewhat unusual from the authors we've read in the past, and so we should be paying attention to that. It does seem that that style reveals some more philosophical questions than narratives. And so we want to make sure that we are observing that and then contemplating how that is similar or different to the authors we've read in the past. Another thing that we're going to see in terms of his style is polysyndeton. And so this is the overuse of conjunctions in a list. And most specifically, we tend to see and or or that is overused in a list. And so look at the sentence below there. We went to the store and to the library and to the beach. Three items in a series. Normally, we would just say, we went to the store, comma, library, comma, and the beach. But polysyndeton would say, hey, take out the commas and put in a conjunction like and over and over and over again. So we will want to practice noticing polysyndeton. And then, of course, we have to ask ourselves, why might he do that? What effect is he after? And how does that relate to his theme? We also want to make note of the pace of that above line. What does it do when we say we went to the store and the library and the beach? It seems to slow the pace down because we have to read it a little bit slower. We're forced to contemplate each item in a little bit more detail. And so maybe that slowing down draws our attention in, and that is an important part for revealing Tim O'Brien's theme. Kind of the contrasting idea of polysyndeton is what we call asyndeton. And this is a lack of conjunctions in lists. So for example, you have the sentence, we want bagels, cream cheese, freedom. And so we've taken out ands between all of them. We've also taken out the and before the last line. And so that is a little bit different than the norm, which would be, we want bagels, comma, cream cheese, comma, and freedom. We've taken out all conjunctions. And the, so the pace is that we have sped it up. Things go by a little bit quicker, and I would argue that the emphasis that the reader is supposed to 
pay attention to the most is that last item. Because we're expecting some sort of pause before the end, we don't get it, therefore we more rapidly approach the end, and so that last word, maybe a contradictory word, is something that we should pay attention to. So that is asyndeton. And then the last one there, the idea of Christian imagery. Do we see any allusions made to Christian symbols, to Christian characters, to situations? And if we see these allusions, how do they tie into Tim O'Brien's revelation of theme? These are going to be the new things that we'll be studying along the way. We'll have some readings, some examples, some smaller practice items within our reading of the things they carried. But these are definitely going to be some new things that we want to keep an eye on. Some additional literary terms that we'll study in this unit, because Tim O'Brien seems to be the master at using them, are irony, juxtaposition, paradox, metafiction, and tone. And so as we move through and as these items seem to come up in our read of the things they carried, we will definitely have many lessons on all of these in our typical pattern, showing what each thing is, explaining why it's important, and then discussing how we find them and ultimately how they can potentially connect to theme. But at this stage of the game, as we're just about to start the novel, these are some important terms you may want to jot down and be a little bit familiar with as we move into the class and potentially start talking about these. Just to prompt you on some of the challenges of this book, I know that you're going to see that this novel does not follow the traditional pattern of beginning, middle, end, or exposition, rising action, etc. It seems to jump around with time. It's almost like, at times, it's told backwards, with some chapters that don't seem to really relate to anything. They're just kind of thrown in there, jumbled up. And so that does allow us to read things in a little bit different manner. But I also think that that asks us to think about some large questions here in terms of the theme. Why are we here? What's important? What is right? Because each of these little chapters seems to be a vignette all to its own, that it could stand on its own. And so since there is no narrative structure holding it together, we're forced to look at a different part of that, and that seems to be the philosophical level. What is Tim O'Brien really saying about life? Additionally, I think his style can be somewhat confusing because we do have the character named Tim O'Brien. The author's name is Tim O'Brien. And oftentimes, those two are not one in the same. While it is true that Tim O'Brien, the author, was drafted, did serve in Vietnam, and then safely return, the Tim O'Brien as character in the novel is not necessarily him. This is a work of fiction. This is not an autobiographical book. And so we do need to be aware of when Tim O'Brien, the character, is separate from Tim O'Brien, the author's voice. And again, we'll get into more of that later as we talk about metafiction, the idea of the author turning away from the novel and speaking directly to the audience. Additional challenges you may find is the idea that you may have a lack of background knowledge on some of these military terms and jargon. Work really hard to not let these things get in your way of thinking and reading. While this is a book about war, it's also not a book about war. It's about greater life issues. It's about the philosophy of life and where does war fit into that. And so while they'll make long lists of technical hardware things, those really aren't the point. Maybe you're looking at this saying, well, I don't care about what this type of weapon is, or I don't understand this bomb thing or this booby trap thing. That's okay. We're going to go ahead and let you know those are not the point of the novel. Those are a means to an end. So please don't get hung up on that. If you feel like you need to know more about it, which I think is always good, we've said this from the beginning, it's better to know more than to know less. Some things you can do, do a simple Google search. What is a bouncing Betty landmine? Well, look it up. See what they do in the world. Ask a friend, ask a neighbor, ask Jeeves. You could watch a movie. There are tons of movies on Vietnam, the Vietnam War, both feature and nonfiction films. And both of these genres could definitely help create an image of what this war looked like, what it smelled like, tasted like, and felt like for the troops involved. And that might help you better get into this book. You could ultimately skip these. I don't think that's your best option, 
because even though they aren't the key focal point of the novel in terms of the weaponry, etc., they do add a roundness, a depth to the book and to the characters. And so if you can better picture these things in your head and kind of have a semblance of an idea of what they are, I think you can get more out of it. So another challenge you may need to overcome as you're reading through it. And so as we get into this, try to bring the background knowledge you may or may not even have about the Vietnam War and war in general to the forefront of your mind. We've said this all the time, that our background knowledge serves to go into the filing cabinet of our brain. We probably know more about a topic than we think. We just need to go back into that filing cabinet and bring those files forward. So now is the time that we need to access that Vietnam folder that you had stashed away after American history class. Take a minute, go ahead and stop the podcast, and jot down as much as you possibly can about what you know about Vietnam. When, why, where, how. Think of anything you can that relates to this time period, and let's bring those files forward, and that will help us serve to start the novel as soon as we can. And so that's all we're going to talk about on this one, just some general suggestions and some general ideas of what's going to be coming down the line as we study the things they carried. As always, if you have any questions, please bring those into class, and we will talk about all of these in much more depth as we move forward, but we just wanted to start planting the seeds about what's going on with this novel, how it's structured, some of the elements in it, so that it does not seem completely foreign to you when we start reading. So as always, bring in those questions, and we will see you soon. Thanks a lot.